Let's practice drawing some free body diagrams. So we'll start with a person in an elevator and we're accelerating downward. So we're concerned about the person, not the actual elevator. So our forces here that we're going to have, we have the force of gravity on the person, as we always do. So we have to draw the force the correct direction and label it. And the normal force from the floor of the elevator, or the scale, depending on the problem, uh, pushing up on the person. Now remember the normal force measures is measured by a scale and the force of gravity is the person's weight. Now our acceleration is down so our net force equation in the y direction we're going to say down is positive and up is negative because of the direction of acceleration so we would say Fg minus Fn equals Ma and then we go from there. Let's try this. A box pushed across the floor at a constant speed. Okay, so we draw our box. And it's on a surface. So let's draw all the forces. So we always have force of gravity. Normal force because we're on a surface. We're pushing it, uh, let's say, to the right. So we'll say force applied. You could call it force push if you want. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and then back the other way, because it's a rough floor, we have force of friction. And acceleration equals zero because we're at a constant speed. So to write our net force equations, in the x direction, let's say uh, to the right is positive, to the left is negative. You get to choose when acceleration is zero. So we'll say Fa minus Ff equals Ma. Now A is zero, so really we could rearrange this and say Fa equals Ff. Okay, now in the y direction, again, we get to pick what direction is positive and negative. So let's say up is positive, down is negative. And we'll do the same thing. Fn minus Fg equals Ma. A is 0, so Fn equals Fg. When A is 0, you could also use uh, equilibrium principles in order to, solve, to find the equations. Now I'll try a different one. Box pushed across the rough floor at a downward angle. So we're going to take our box, and it's on a rough floor. That means there's friction, and it also means there's normal force. But our angle that we're pushing with is at a downward angle. So we'll say it's off this way. We'll call that, how about we just call that FP for push. Uh, we're going to have normal force from the floor, force of gravity, friction going this way. Okay, now we need to find our x and y components of FP. So we'll draw our x component going this way. And call that FPX. And my FP is in the way. So we'll move that. And our FPY will be here. This angle would be the theta we're given if I gave you an angle. So for our x direction, uh, let's say there's an acceleration this way, speeding up as we push. So we're going to say fpx minus ff equals ma because the direction of acceleration is the positive direction. Now fpx is going to be fp cosine theta minus ff equals ma. And we'd continue from there based on what we have. In the y direction, we're going to say there's no acceleration in the y direction, so up equals down from equilibrium. So we can say Fn equals Fg plus Fpy. This is up equals down. Uh, so Fpy, we'll have to substitute in for that. So we'll say Fn equals Fg plus Fp sine theta. Then we can plug stuff in, rearrange, solve for whatever we're looking for. Let's do a box sliding down a rough hill, and it's speeding up as it goes down the hill. So our forces here, we have the force of gravity going straight down, and we have to do FGY and FGX. Remember that this angle here is theta, the same theta as the hill. 
Force of friction is going to go back up the hill. Normal force is perpendicular to the hill, and our acceleration is pointing down the hill. So in the x-direction, we'll say fgx minus ff equals ma. fgx is going to be fg sine theta minus ff equals ma, and continue from there. In the y direction, there is no acceleration, so up equals down. So we'd say fn equals fgy. So fn equals fg cosine theta, and continue from there. Now let's try a problem with equilibrium. Remember, you have to draw two different net free body diagrams. You have to draw one for the box, and you have to draw one for the ropes. Something like that. Okay, the box, we're going to have FG going down and a tension going up. Let's call that T3. I didn't put those in the picture. Let's call this one 3, this one 2, and this one T1. Okay, so then for the box, we only have the Y direction, so we'd say uh, T3 equals FG, because up equals down, left equals right, but there is no left and right. Okay, so let's box that off on its own area. Uh, now for the knot, we have T3 going down, we have T2 going off at an angle here, and we have T1 going up this way. Okay, now we have to find the components of the ones that are not in the x and y directions. So T2, x, is going to point off this way. T2, y is going to be down, in this case. T1, x will be over this way. T1, y, up here. Now we'll need this angle theta and this angle theta. Let's call this one theta 2. That theta 1. Okay, so now in the x direction, getting a little cramped here, we're going to say t1x equals t2x because left equals right and there's only two left and right forces. So that's going to be t1, uh, the way we've drawn it, t1 cosine theta 1 equals, equals t2 cosine theta 2. All right, and then uh, in the y direction, we have three forces. In this case, we have T1y is our only up force, and that equals our down forces of T2y plus T3. So T1y is going to be T1 sine theta 1 equals T2 sine theta 2 plus T3. Three. For multiple objects, you have to draw multiple free body diagrams. Here we have two objects, so we're going to have two free body diagrams. So let's start with object one. You have the force of gravity going down. You have the normal force going up because it's on a surface. You have, let's say we have friction acting backwards here. And we're going to have tension acting to the right, because that's the direction the rope goes. And our acceleration is also going to be to the right. On box two, we have tension acting up, force of gravity acting down, and our acceleration is also down. Okay, so now for our uh, net, net force equations, in the x direction, we're going to have T minus force of friction, equals ma. In the y direction here, we have no acceleration in the y direction, so we could say fn equals fg. Now in our box 2 over here, we only have the y direction, so we could say fg minus t equals ma. Now the things that are useful here, uh, the tensions are equal and the accelerations are equal for both objects, so we can use that in doing multiple equations, multiple unknowns.